Um, was it hard eating around normal people, like at parties or holidays or whatever? Uh, I didn't have a problem with that before or after surgery necessarily. Um, I have heard some, some big people say that they didn't feel comfortable uh, pre-surgery eating around people. Um, the only thing that I think uh, I was mindful of after surgery is that people were probably watching what I eat because they have that um, belief that, oh, she's just going to keep eating the way she used to and she's going to gain all of her weight back. And, you know, it's just normal for people to think that way. Um, so I, I was... I knew that I was mindful that they were probably, and maybe they weren't, but they were probably watching what I ate just to see if I was uh, really dedicated to the diet after surgery. So um, I guess there was that. Um, but then, like, work functions and everything, if we did a potluck, I was sure to bring something that I knew that I could eat. Um, but my work family was really great and really supportive after surgery, which, you know, I told everybody, some people don't, but I tell everybody um, about having gastric bypass. Um, so they would always ask, like, can, I'm going to bring this, can you eat it? I'm like, no, I can't, but you know what, that's fine, you go ahead and bring it, y'all enjoy it, I'm bringing this, you know, so, and then we were always the department that brought in the donuts and the candy and, uh, you know, if it was somebody's birthday, we were celebrating. If somebody's having a baby, we were celebrating. You know, if somebody uh, had a loved one that passed away, we brought food in. You know, just, we were always eating. So, um, if I didn't bring in the fruits when they brought in donuts, somebody inevitably always did something like that. And then, instead of just a, a candy dish, I had sugar-free candy dish on my desk. You know, stuff like that. So, um... Do I feel like a normal sort, normal sized person now when I walk in a room? No. I still see myself as fat for the most part. Um, you know, I still look for the chairs without arms or uh, the wider chairs or uh, instead of a place. Uh, you know, like right now I'm unemployed. I was laid off of my job back at the end of May. So I have to go on employment. And there's usually uh, a long line of people there or, or the waiting room is full. So instead of sitting in a place that is in between two people, I will scan the room to look for a place that's maybe away from other people or not as close because I didn't want, um, as a big person, I didn't want anybody else to feel uncomfortable sitting next to me, you know, because I didn't just take up a chair. It was a chair and a half that I took up, so I still do that. Um, and, you know, I still identify with the big person in the room. Um, I have a young lady in one of my classes who is quite large. She's um, bigger than I was before I lose, lost weight, and I know because I asked her what size she was. So I was going to give her my my big clothes size, but, you know, maybe it's wrong, but I am mindful to make sure that I talk to her, that I keep her in the discussions, because I remember when people tried not to include me in the discussions and stuff, but, you know, I'm opinionated, and I'm a Leo, so I got right in there. Anyway, so, anyways. Um, have we come up with names for the baby? And what are the meanings behind them? Yes, we've, we've had names for literally ever. We actually came up with um, the boy's name, um, well, actually the boy and girl's name while we were dating. Um, if it's a boy, it will be Corey Jack. And AJ's best friend, uh, Corey, passed away right after uh, graduation. And they were 18. And I never got the chance to meet him. I did talk to him on the phone, I think, a couple times. So, um, and AJ actually has his name tatted on his arm. Um, so when we were dating, you know, I actually told AJ, you know, if we have babies, we should name 
our son, Corey, or even our, our daughter, we were going to uh, name a girl, Corey Beth. Um, so we've had that name picked out forever, and then Jack is AJ's dad's name, and we wanted to honor him. Um, plus, I like those short names, like Jack and Max and Jake and Zeke and, you know, stuff like that. So, Corey Jack for a boy, and then if it's a girl, she will be Addison Grace. Um, you know, AJ is a huge Cubs fan. And Wrigley Field is on uh, Clark and Addison and Waveland. Those are the streets that it sits on. So Addison uh, for where Wrigley Field is at. And then Grace is like a marriage of uh, our teams. I used to be a really big uh, Diamondbacks fan. Um, we actually lived in Arizona, I think, the second or third year um, after the Diamondbacks started playing, and they were really big there. And we, we lived in Phoenix the year that they won the World Series. So um, since we're not out there, I'm, I don't follow them as closely. I'm, I've kind of gone over to the Cubs side, and in this house you can't help that. But um, Mark Grace used to be the uh, first baseman, if I'm getting this right, for the Chicago Cubs for like ever, number 17. And um, then he went on to play for the Arizona Diamondbacks. He was actually uh, playing for him the, the year that they won the World Series. And he's actually an announcer for them now. So it's like bringing the two together. Plus he's uh, AJ's favorite Cubs player of all time. So, Edison Grace. And then, <laughs> who's the best husband in the world? I wonder where that question came from. Um... AJ. Um, but in, in all seriousness, uh, I am truly blessed to be in the kind of relationship that AJ and I are in. Um, I've had relationships in the past. I was actually married before. And this is hands down the best one. He is truly my best friend. So. Yeah. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, sometimes it gets rained out, and this time I won. Speak of the devil. I'm done. You can come in. You can come in. I'm all done. Bye.